Chapter Four of Esther Reed. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Esther Reed by Pansy. Chapter Four: The Sunday Lesson. Alfred and Julia Reed were in the sitting room studying their Sabbath school lessons. Those two were generally to be found together being twins they had commenced life together and had thus far gone side by side it was a quiet october sabbath afternoon the twins had a great deal of business on hand during the week and the sabbath school lesson used to stand a fair chance of being forgotten so mrs reed had made a law that half an hour of every sabbath afternoon should be spent in studying the lesson for the coming sabbath esther sat in the same room by the window she had been reading, but her book had fallen idly in her lap, and she seemed lost in thought. Sadie, too, was there, carrying on a whispered conversation with Minnie, who was snuggled close in her arms, and merry bursts of laughter came every few minutes from the little girl. The idea of Sadie keeping quiet herself, or of keeping anybody else quiet, was simply absurd. But I say to you that ye resist not evil, but whosoever shall smite thee on thy right cheek, turn to him the other also, read Julia slowly and thoughtfully. Alfred, what do you suppose that can mean? I don't know, I'm sure, Alfred said. The next one is just as queer. And if any man shall sue thee at the law, and take away thy coat, let him have thy cloak also. I'd like to see me doing that. I'd fight for it, I reckon. Oh, Alfred, you wouldn't if the Bible said you mustn't, would you? I don't suppose this means us at all, said Alfred, using unconsciously the well-known argument of all who have tried to slip away from the gospel teaching since Adam's time. I suppose it's talking to those wicked old fellows who lived before the flood or some such time. Well, anyhow, said Julia, I should like to know what it all means. I wish Mother would come home. I wonder how Mrs. Vincent is. Do you suppose she will die, Alfred? I don't know. Just hear this, Julia. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. Wouldn't you like to see anybody who did all that? Sadie, said Julia, rising suddenly and moving over to where the frolic was going on, won't you tell us about our lesson? We don't understand a bit about it, and I can't learn anything that I don't understand. Bless your heart, child. I suspect you know more about the Bible this minute than I do. Mother was too busy taking care of you two when I was a little chicken to teach me as she has you. Well, what can that mean? If a man strikes you on one cheek, let him strike the other too. Yes, said Alfred, chiming in. And if anybody takes your coat away, let him have your cloak too. I suppose it means just that, said Sadie. If anybody steals your mittens, as that bush girl did yours last winter, Julia, you are to take your hood right off and give it to her. Oh, Sadie, you don't ever mean that. And then, continued Sadie gravely, if that shouldn't satisfy her, you had better take off your shoes and stockings and give her them. Sadie, said Esther, how can you teach those children such nonsense? She isn't teaching me anything, interrupted Alfred. I guess I ain't such a dunce as to swallow all that stuff. Well, Sadie said meekly, I'm sure I'm doing the best I can, and you are all finding fault. I have explained to the best of my abilities, Julia. I'll tell you the truth, and for a moment her laughing face grew sober. I don't know the least thing about it. Don't pretend to. Why don't you ask Esther? She can tell you more about the Bible in a minute, I presume, than I could in a year. Esther laid her book on the window. Julia, bring your Bible here, she said gravely. Now what is the matter? I never heard you make such a commotion over your lesson. Mother always explains it, said Alfred, and she hasn't got back from Mrs. Vincent's, and I don't believe anyone else in this house can do it. Alfred, said Esther, don't be impertinent. Julia, what is it that you want to know? About the man being struck on one cheek, how he must let them strike the other two. What does it mean? It means just that. When girls are cross and ugly to you, you must be good and kind to them. 
and when a boy knocks down another he must forgive him instead of getting angry and knocking back ho said alfred contemptuously i never saw a boy yet who would do it that only proves that boys are naughty quarrelsome fellows who don't obey what the bible teaches but esther interrupted julia anxiously was that true what sadie said about me giving my shoes and stockings and my hood to folks who stole something from me of course not sadie shouldn't talk such nonsense to you that is about men going to law mother will explain it when she goes over the lesson with you julia was only half satisfied what does that verse mean about doing good to them that here i'll read it said alfred but i say unto you love your enemies bless them that curse you do good to them that hate you and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you why that is plain enough it means just what it says when people are ugly to you and act as though they hated you you must be very good and kind to them and pray for them and love them esther does god really mean for us to love people who are ugly to us and be good to them of course well then why don't we if god says so esther why don't you that's the point exclaimed sadie in her most roguish tone i'm glad you've made the application julia now esther's heart had been softening under the influence of these peaceful bible words she believed them and in her heart was a real earnest desire to teach her brother and sister bible truths left alone she would have explained that those who loved jesus were struggling in a weak feeble way to obey these directions that she herself was trying trying hard sometimes that they ought to but there was this against esther her whole life was so at variance with those plain searching bible rules that the youngest child could not but see it and sadie's mischievous tones and evident relish of her embarrassment at julia's question destroyed the self-searching thoughts she answered with severe dignity sadie if i were you i wouldn't try to make the children as irreverent as i was myself then she went dignifiedly from the room dr van anden paused for a moment before sadie as she sat alone in the sitting-room that same sabbath evening sadie said he is there one verse in the bible which you have never read plenty of them doctor i commenced reading the bible through once but i stopped at some chapter in numbers the thirtieth i think it is isn't it or somewhere along there where all those hard names are you know but why do you ask the doctor opened a large bible which lay on the stand before them and read aloud ye have perverted the words of the living god sadie looked puzzled now doctor whatever possessed you to think that i had never read that verse god counts that a solemn thing sadie very likely what then i was reading on the piazza when the children came to you for an explanation of their lesson sadie laughed did you hear that conversation doctor i hope you were benefited then more gravely dr van anden do you really mean me to think that i was perverting scripture i certainly think so sadie were you not giving the children wrong ideas concerning the teachings of our saviour sadie was quite sober now i told the truth at last doctor i don't know anything about these matters people who profess to be christians do not live according to our saviour's teaching at least i don't see any who do and it sometimes seems to me that those verses which the children were studying cannot mean what they say or christian people would surely try to follow them for an answer dr van anden turned the bible leaves again and pointed with his finger to this verse which sadie read but as he which has called you is holy so be ye holy in all manner of conversation after that he went out of the room and sadie reading the verse over again could not but understand that she might have a perfect pattern if she would end of chapter four recording by tricia g